you people with your fast fingers. It's time for Coffee with Scott Adams. That would be me. Make sure you have your beverage. We're going to do simultaneous sipping to get this kicked off. Get ready. Here we go. That's good stuff. Good, good coffee. I hope your beverage was just as delicious as mine. So I wrote a blog post this morning called The Demolition President. Some of you saw it already. I just tweeted it. And I thought I would list some of the things that the president has broken while we're talking about all the things he's accomplished. So the year end is a is always the the roundups of who's done what and all the the media organizations are doing a good job of showing us what he's done. But I thought I'd show you what he has he's broken. Somebody said broken hearts. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So yes, uh Somebody mentioned uh, just now that Vanity Fair did a mocking article about Hillary Clinton, which has caused the left and her supporters to go nuts because now the left is eating its own. Uh, I, I see the left has formed sort of this snake that's sort of in a, a circular position where the, the head of the snake is eating the tail of its own tail until the, the circle will just get smaller and disappear. Yeah, he broke... Uh, I should have put uh, Kathy Griffin on the list. All right, so here are the things he's broken. I'll just run through the list. I won't won't spend any time. He broke the GOP and then remade them in his his image. It would be tough to run for office as an anti-Trumper now if you're a Republican. He broke the DNC. They have no, no charismatic leader, very little money, low credibility. He got rid of the Clinton dynasty and the Bush dynasty. He broke the mainstream media. Their credibility is gone. Their ratings are up. They're still profitable because he did promise us a profitable economy. So that's hilarious. Their credibility is down. This is the mainstream media. But their profits are up. (laughs) That's exactly what he promised. Um, The NFL, of course, is struggling. The FBI leadership is lost his credibility. The FBI itself is still plenty credible, but the leadership has some questions to answer. Uh, all the political pundits have been wrong for two years straight. Uh, government regulations are less of them. Hollywood's got a big problem. Uh, the big stars have managed to alienate 40% of their potential audience um, in whatever time they took off from groping. Uh, North Korea's uh, economy is in uh, is in a spiral, or I assume it is. ISIS, you remember ISIS? ISIS used to be this big organization. They were scary terrorists. I think you remember them. At one point, there were tens of thousands of them. Now there are fewer than a thousand, is the latest estimate. Uh, there was the TPP in the Paris Climate Accord. We got out of those. And then, of course, there's reality. President Trump broke reality, as I told you he would two years ago. I said that he would change the way we actually saw reality, and he has. You remember the days when you thought, hey, I'll just go to the news, I'll get all the facts as they are accurately presented to me, and then I will use these facts from the news to make make my reasoned decisions. But now you know that that doesn't happen. We've all seen it so clearly that people don't use facts to make decisions. And if they did use facts to make decisions, they would have their choice of which facts to use, the CNN facts or the Fox News facts. (laughs) Although, to be fair, they both get the facts right most of the time. But they do put a spin on it that changes what you think about the facts. So we're starting to watch um, the party of hate, a hashtag POH. Um, we're starting to see them uh, not only, they, they've of course been you know, rabid about anybody who looks like a Trump supporter, uh, but, but now they're starting to eat their own because they don't have a, you know, a viable internal plan. So now when people uh, come after me on Twitter, which happens many times a day, with nothing but insults, 
So the the typical the typical comment I get on uh, Twitter these days is, "Oh, you're a Trump." Well, let me do this with the beard. We're going to go full beard here. Oh, you're a Trump supporter. No, I don't mean to. That sounded like a, a racist accent. This is supposed to be my liberal impression. If that sounded Asian, that was accidental. Here it is. Uh, you are a piece of shit because you supported President Trump. That's, that's my typical tweet. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I just respond with hashtag POH, stands for Party of Hate. And <laughs> what's beautiful about it is that if you do the same, if you use the, the POH hashtag, it will create this, uh, this great database of all the horrible things <laughs> that people on the left are saying that are, you know, fact free. Uh, so I recommend using hashtag party of hate instead of uh, engaging. If all it is is hate, if they have a point and you want to debate the point, that makes sense, of course. But if it's just pure hatred, just give them a hashtag party of hate and let them stew in their own bile. Let them marinate in their own bile. <laughs> yeah, Joy Vila is not doing well this week, is she? So you may have seen that Politico listed me with a number of other people for uh, worst predictions. So I was on a list of worst predictions. And one of my predictions was that, um, I think I made this like right after the election. Uh, and I said that a year later, meaning September of next year, that uh, that people would be embarrassed to be anti-Trump. Well, I was wrong by a couple of months. Because at this point, if you think Trump is a Hitler who also just recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, it should be a little bit embarrassing. Or I think awkward is what I said. I said it would be awkward to be anti-Trump by September of 20, 2017. I did miss it by a few months, but it wasn't bad. Because here we are in December 2017, and if you're still calling the president Hitler while watching the news that uh, they might name a train station in Israel after him because they love him so much in Israel, that's got to be awkward. You know, there were a lot of things that, that I thought about the president. Some were true, some were not true, but none of them were awkward. I'd feel really bad if I'd been calling him Hitler for a year, and it turns out that he's the best friend Israel ever had. Awkward. Um, I'm going to ignore Joy Villa, uh, only because I think she is sensationally unimportant. I, I get that you like to go after certain personalities, but she doesn't have any importance to anything. She's just one individual who has some opinions, does some things. That's all. That's the whole story. Um, will the leaders of the world follow? The leaders of the world are following. What other predictions? Well, I do need to get my predictions together, so um, I'll probably do that for the year the year end. But um, I'll give you some, all right? I'm, I may be leaving out some categories, but here are some more predictions for 2018. Um, I see the economy being great in 2018. I see Bitcoin up. This is not investment advice. Don't take my advice on investing. These are just predictions. Uh, I see... Uh, North Korea wanting to come to the table and the United States in no hurry because their economy will be getting smaller while ours gets bigger every every minute we're alive. 
Um, I'm going to predict that we'll see our first hobby drone terror attack on the mainland in 2018. So I don't know how bad it will be, but I think you'll see a small drone attack on the mainland in some terrorist way. Probably not a big attack. Probably just testing the gears, if you will. <clears throat> um, I see the continued destruction of ISIS, although I'm sure they'll have some terror attacks of note, because that's what they do. Uh, I see no peace between... Uh, between the Palestinians and Israel, although there might be interest in talking about it. But neither side has a real interest in, in a formal peace process because Israel um, gains, Israel gets an advantage by, um, by being at a state of sort of war, and so do the Palestinians, at least the leadership. The leadership would be killed if they wanted peace. The Palestinian people would be way better off with peace because then they could get prosperity. But their leadership can't do that because they would be killed. Um, predictions? I don't have any predictions about the EU. Saudi-Israel relations will improve. You predict the return of Al-Qaeda to the top? Yeah, maybe, but it feels like their brand is tainted now. The trouble is you want to, the terrorists want to join um, organizations that are winning and rising, and Al-Qaeda doesn't look like that. Oh, I predict that the Mueller investigation will find no crimes by President Trump. I predict that there will be no um successful criminal prosecutions about Uranium One, at least in terms of Hillary Clinton. You know, so if there's an investigation, sometimes you pick up people who are lying to the FBI and that sort of thing. But I think Uranium One will be a nothing. I think uh, collusion will be a nothing. Obstruction of justice by the president will be a nothing. Um, the FBI will have to clean house a little bit, and they will. Midterm elections. If the Republicans do something serious to try to get the black vote, they have some chance in the 2018 election. If they do nothing to get the black vote, they'll probably lose a little bit. Uh, marijuana decriminalization to gain the black vote. Well, by itself it wouldn't be much, but it certainly could be part of the package, yes. I predict that you will see the GOP at least talking seriously about how to get the black vote. Because, uh, and, uh, and I would also suggest that uh, black voters have more to gain by working with the GOP just because they have the power right now, and the GOP needs them as much as they need each other. Hi, John. I hope you like my book. Uh, how much does the political scene affect your Dilbert comics? I try to keep those separate. Uh, <laughs> infrastructure program? Um, I would think we'd get some kind of infrastructure program. <laughs> the wall. Um, I don't have a prediction about the wall, except that I, I think you'll see some kind of slow progress there. I think the, the, the best situation for the wall is that it's being built or prototyped or tested. Perhaps we'll, perhaps we'll pick a, a winning, uh, a winning construction company and do a little bit of the wall, whatever we can afford, and, and maybe see how it works. Because the wall works 
the wall works to decrease immigration simply by being something we talk about all the time. So you don't actually have to build it. It's working the way it is. Healthcare. I think you'll see creative ideas coming out of healthcare that are more creative than anything you've seen so far. So on healthcare, you'll see breakthroughs in creative thinking, which I think could lead to at least specific changes that are good, if not a comprehensive change. You may see executive actions and you know and picking apart, not picking apart, but picking away as certain elements of healthcare that need to be picked at. 2018 midterms, I said, it depends on whether the GOP gets serious about trying to get the black vote. If they do get serious, they could take 2018 uh, hard. And if they don't, I would expect Democrats to pick up, pick up some uh, seats. Jared and Ivanka, yes, I think they'll stay in D.C. I think they'll continue working with the president in some fashion. Am I ever going to take a vacation? Yes, I'm going to take a week in January. Bill Maher show again? Well, that would be up to them. They'd have to invite me. Um, if there's anybody here from the media the larger media, let's say the TV media. Um, Hawk Newsom would love to go on your show and present some ideas he has to make the world better. Ideas which either the Republicans or the Democrats could embrace. So they're, they're, not, they're not partisan in a way that you would expect them to be. And I think that would be a good conversation. So if there's anybody there, contact me and I can put you in contact with, with Hawk. But it would be crazy not to have him on because he's he, he's good on camera and he's got some provocative ideas that are completely worth discussing. Hawk needs to divorce Black Lives Matter. I think that's a conversation that could be had as well. There's definitely a brand problem with Black Lives Matter, but I don't think any individuals are are you know married to a brand. They can change. Um. Say the name again. Hawk Newsom is the uh, the leader of Black Lives Matter, the New York chapter, not the national chapter, but the New York chapter. And they have some uh, some good thinking that I haven't seen that at the national chapter. The national chapter seems a little more unfocused. <laughs> Would you ever do a format where you interview guests? Yes, I would. Um, I'm having a terrible time getting the technology for that to work, but yes, I would. All right, I think, I, oh, North Korea will, North Korea will uh, shrink, their economy will, and they will get more and more desperate. So I think we will continue squeezing their economy in 2018 and they will want to talk we will act like we want to talk to, but we're not going to be in any hurry because the smaller their economy gets, the better it is for us. Um, <laughs> have your persuasion skills improved in 2017? Probably, just because they improve every year. Have you considered a podcast? Yes. Interview with Lionel. Lionel who? Uh, it's not a speaking engagement in January. I'm just going on vacation. Did you see China is giving them oil? Let's see. I saw that Chinese companies, individual companies that are Chinese, have been apparently trading with North Korea in violation of the United Nations sanctions. Now... I've been saying since the beginning that I don't believe the story that Chinese government is just pretending to play along while secretly helping North Korea. I don't think that's what's happening. I think that individual Chinese companies are doing what they need to do to skirt regulations, and the, go and the government of China probably doesn't like it. 
but they may not have as much power over corporations as we think. That's one of the reasons I imagine that President Xi is going after corruption so hard in China, because if you buy off enough politicians and you're a big corporation, you could probably do anything you want. Um, so I believe that those companies who are trading with North Korea are now legitimate targets of the United States um, intelligence and military. More intelligence than military. You want to be a little bit subtle about it. All right, I'm going to sign off now. i got some more things to do. It's been great talking to you. Oh, one other thing. Um, my startup, WenHub, um, is building a new app that's in production right now. will be done pretty quickly. And what the app does is it allows you to sign up as an expert and charge using uh, very easily our, our cryptocurrency that's part of the system. You can charge for your services and trade your crypto money in for real money anytime you want. And uh, the people who, the, the first experts, somebody signed up already, thank you. The first experts who sign up, and it doesn't matter what kind of expert you are, any kind of expert on any topic, the first experts will have um, some priority for a while on the search rank. So if somebody's looking for an expert on X, if you're the first one who signs up, you'll get a priority uh, ranking for that. Um, the cryptocurrency is our own when, uh, when tokens, which will be, as soon as we're live, they will be tradable on exchanges, etc. Now, the, the when tokens are only useful within the app, but they can be traded for other cryptocurrencies, which can be traded for cash. <laughs> What's the investment cost for developing an app like that? Well, in this particular case, we sold tokens. So we did a, a SAFT, a simple agreement for future tokens, uh, similar to an ICO, except with more legal legal rigor, you know, so that we don't have the, the risks of the ICO. And that actually is funding the new app. Um, but I can't give you numbers on that. I mean, I could. I just prefer not to. In general, people don't develop apps for less than a few hundred thousand dollars. So that's that's on the low end. If you're doing a you know uh, a serious app, um, patent app. Yeah, we do have a patent application. Um, what is a token? A token is just a cryptocurrency reference. It just means a, a coin or a token. You're a patent expert. Well, you should sign up. <laughs> All right, so go to Wenhub, um, or you actually you can go to my blog at dilbert.com, and at the end of my blog post you'll see a link to go sign up as an expert, or you can see the same thing at Wenhub's Twitter feed. Any of those things, whoever signs up first is uh, gets priority in the rankings. And thanks for listening. I'll talk to you tomorrow. No, experts don't have to commit anything. In fact, they only have to sign up whenever they feel like it. So if you want to be an expert in anything and you're sitting around and you're just bored or you have an afternoon off or a client canceled a meeting, you just turn on the app and say, I'm available. And if somebody